Yeah, it's an important point because capital or you know, capital protection is a, a key starting point. Um, we don't own just about any commodity company, so we don't own commodity businesses, and certainly not small cap commodity businesses that are, um, are highly exposed to um, oil prices or commodity prices. And um, you know, our last our last remaining commodity business, and we've been. We've been running down commodities for years in our portfolio. We sold Rio a couple of years ago. We're down to um, a percent or two in BHP, and that's it. And we we own them because they they've got that uh, substantial cost advantage. Um, but I think you avoid a lot of those shocks by um, by um, not owning commodity-based businesses that are subject to forces beyond their control. Now you can't completely insure from geopolitical type shocks. Um, but um, one thing that we take in taking a long-term view is we take opportunities and you know with a stock like uh, REA for example it's trading today at something mid 40s uh, 45 dollars uh, we think that stock will go to hundred dollars in five years time we'd rather it went via 35 to be honest um, rather than straight to there it gives us an opportunity to top up a bit more so we often use the shocks whatever they may be, um, to top up on the stocks that we, we really like. We, we try not to take hard views on currency and we're a bottom-up manager so we look at each individual company and how it manages its particular currency exposure. Having said that, more than 50% of the revenues of our portfolio are foreign-based because high-quality businesses that are developing in Australia um, soon run out of market here. Right? If you're really good, um, what happens is you run out of enough customers and so you start looking overseas. And a lot of the businesses we own um, now have fairly substantial businesses overseas and for them a lower dollar actually is a benefit. So if I look at across our portfolio, we've got companies like Brambles and Cochlear with most of their businesses offshore, translation effect into Australia is good. We've got businesses like Domino's Pizza who are building substantial businesses outside Australia in France, you know, Europe generally, um, and Japan. We've got Iris in uh, UK and uh, Canada. Um, so, you know, there's, um, and, I, and the list goes on. So, you know, more than 50% now comes from overseas. So actually, we just sit back and enjoy the currency movements. Yes, I mean, their major opportunity is to take the very high level of intellectual property they've got and use it in other areas after they've bedded down their existing um, businesses that they're growing. We think they've got substantial opportunity to uh, increase their footprint. This is a rollout story. Um, they're um, effectively underrepresented in, the, in, in France and they could roll out hundreds and hundreds of stores over there and, and the technology they've developed in Australia is really world class. Um, they're making pizzas faster, cheaper, delivering them quicker, giving more power to the user by creating apps, high level of um, social media engagement, in fact really high levels. And uh, as a result, that's all able to be transferred to other countries. So ac acquisitions are a good idea for them as long as they're bolt on and they're not trying to do something too different. Okay. We think that's their opportunity is to increase their footprint. I would have thought that the master franchisor in the US of Domino's would be offering Domino's Australia first, first grab at, at things that came up because they've done such a terrific job.